Hello, welcome back to the Cosmic Classroom. And it's now time to talk about dark energy, this mysterious force in the universe. So, I will try to explain to you what is the evidence for dark energy. Why is it that we, we believe in such a weird thing out there? And then I'm going to explain to you how dark energy behaves. I won't be tell, able to tell you what dark energy is because I don't know. Nobody does. But we'll see, uh, at least try to understand why is it we believe in such a weird thing. So, the evidence for dark energy, the primary evidence for dark energy, comes from supernova type 1a. So, it's not the only kind of evidence. There's plenty of other evidence out there coming from the quasi microwave background. But I want to focus on the, the evidence that comes from supernovae type 1a. So supernovae type 1a are standard candles, okay? So they have a standard luminosity that we know. And therefore, if we know how luminous they really are and we measure how luminous they appear to be, we can determine the distance to the object, all right? So in here, what we have is a plot of, that in the x-axis shows the red shift, in other words, it, which is another, which is also um, related to the distance due to the expansion of the universe. So this is the red shift, small red shifts are here on the left uh, corner, high red shifts are here on the right corner, in, in, in the y-axis we have magnitude. In other words, a measurement of how bright something appears. But astronomers like to be strange and reverse things and make it as confusing as possible. So big numbers mean faint objects, faint, mean faint uh, brightnesses. And small numbers mean bright ones. So in here, they are bright objects and in, in up, fainter objects. So as expected, as the red shift increases, the, the supernovae further and further away appear to be fainter. Of course, they are further away, therefore they appear to be fainter. Supernovae that are closer appear to be brighter. That's what this plot is, is showing us. Now, we know the universe is expanding. So if the universe is expanding, there is the direct relationship between red shift and distance. And from this direct relationship between redshift and distance, if we measure the redshift and we measure the, uh, well, we can measure the distance in two ways. If we measure the redshift, we can use Hubble's law to infer the distance. And we can also measure the distance using the magnitudes. We know how bright the object truly is. We know how bright it appears to be. And that tells us the distance to an object. So there are two ways of computing the distances to a supernovae uh, type 1a. One way is based on the luminosity. It's called the luminosity distance. It's based on the magnitude, OK? Uh, so we can compute the distance this way, the distance this way. And we can also compute the distance in a different way, which is based on the Hubble's law. So if we know the redshift and we know the rate of expansion of the universe, we can then compute the distance. We measure distances in two ways, and we should expect the two distances to be the same. After all, it's the same object, so the distances should agree. It turns out that they don't. The distances don't agree. If you measure the distance based on the luminosity, uh, they appear to be larger. The object appears to be further if you compute the distance from the luminosity, than if you compute the distance from the Hubble, Hubble's law. So that's weird. The same object has a certain distance based on its luminosity that's greater than the distance inferred by the expansion of the universe. All right. So, so here's just a sketch of uh, supernova type 1a to remind you what that is. It is when you have a binary system and uh, the uh, a big massive star is giving mass to uh, a white dwarf, which will then explode. And this is a supernova type 1a right here in this galaxy. So just to illustrate. But, but why dl greater than dh? 
Why? What does that mean? Two distances to the same object. Let's think about this slowly, all right? So let's, for example, think about redshift 1. At redshift 1, the universe was half the size that it is today, okay? half as big. Now let's use a certain Hubble constant. We know the Hubble constant to be about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So if that's the Hubble constant, we know that redshift equals 1 happens at 4.5 times 10 to the 17 seconds ago. So that's how far away did it happen. Now, if the, ra if the Hubble constant had always been smaller than that, if the universe was expanding at a slower rate, then this would have happened uh, even further back in time. Okay, so if the universe expands fast, that means that redshift equals that means that redshift equals one was at a time closer than today than if the universe is expanding slower. So what the fact that the luminosity distance being greater than what's expected based on the current rate of expansion seems to indicate that at redshift that redshift equals one actually happened more than four point five times 10 to the 17 seconds ago. In other words, the universe was expanding more slowly in the past. That's why the, the objects appear fainter than we expect them to be, because they are actually further than we expect them to be given the, given the, constant, given the current rate of acceleration. Okay? Light traveled for more time and therefore a longer distance before reaching the telescope. Okay, so what this is telling us is that the expansion of the universe wasn't always constant. So here's a slide that shows what a constant rate of expansion would look like. Okay, let's start with a universe that that's. Uh, one billion years old, really, really small right here. Right, this one. So it's a small one. And, and after five billion years, it doubles, in, it doubles in size, okay? So after five billion years, at a time six billion years, it's two times as large. If you wait another five billion years, it would double in size again. That's a constant rate of expansion. Okay, so if the rate of expansion is always the same, it will keep doubling in time, doubling in size at always the same amount of time. What the supernovae seem to be indicating is that instead, the universe that started, you know, with the same size yet one billion years, doubled in size just as before in five billion years, but the next five billion years, it didn't double in size, it tripled in size, okay? So it's expanding faster now than it was before. I'm just going to flash back the previous slide and this one to show the difference. So this is a constant rate of expansion right there, doubling in size at, at every five billion years. And this is an accelerated rate of expansion. It more than doubles in size in the last five billion years. Okay. So dark energy seems to be make seems to be accelerating the rate of expansion. It looks like the universe is not only expanding, but it's expanding faster and faster and faster as the universe gets older. So this is a timeline, past and future. Gravity, dark matter, any kind of matter wants to bring matter together. Gravitation is always attractive, wants to make the universe recollapse, bring it back together. But dark energy behaves like a spring or like anti-gravity. It wants to pull things apart. And the older the universe becomes, the more successful this dark energy is in moving objects apart. So dark energy is a kind of anti-gravity, you know, that it's, it's 
making the universe expand faster today than it used to be. And if we extrapolate that trend, the universe tomorrow will then be expanding at an even faster rate than it is today. In other words, we already knew that our universe was going to end up cold and dark. Now we know it's going to end up cold and dark faster. That's what we know now. All right. And I just want to reemphasize that the evidence is not just from supernovae. Okay. There is more evidence now. There is evidence with the CMB. So it really seems um, strange and a very interesting time to be an astronomer. Uh, I hope that helped, and I'll see you next time.